roughly 20 percent or more this year. So how should investors be evaluating and rebalancing their portfolios after back to back years of strong returns? Let's ask Kristen Bitterly, head of City Global Wealth at Work, back here post nine. Welcome back. Thank you. Good to see you. Uh, you pretty po I mean, I guess the general consensus at this point is positive. Trend is still up. Markets has, have more room to run. Does your view fall right into the line with that? I think so. I think, look, going into the end of this year, we have basically one more week of economic data that could, even that data, what are we expecting? Maybe a really robust jobs report that could push back one of the rate cuts. But even if that were to happen, I think the overarching sentiment is positive. And at this moment, I don't think we see anything that would significantly derail the rally that we've seen. I mean, we've, we've already as I said earlier, kind of come to grips with the fact that we're going to get fewer cuts. Yep. So when you look at what the market's pricing in for next year, it's only about two, maybe three. I, we do think we're going to get the 25 basis point cut um, in December. Mm -hmm. But I think when you look at the backdrop of what we know to be true, right? So what we know to be true right now, you still have a lot of cash on the sidelines. You've had robust earnings. You've seen a broadening out of that earnings. And now looking at the new administration, yes, there is this healthy tension between deregulation and tariffs and what's going to dominate the markets. But I think there's more certainty around deregulation which is why you're seeing those flows come into areas like financials, energy, but more specifically industrials and infrastructure in that space. What is your, what's your base case for the market performance next year? So I think we're going to see a continuation of earnings growth. I don't think there's anything from a market perspective that would tell us that we're not going to see continued earnings growth. I think the one major difference, though, is where are you picking your spots? So mm -hmm. as we're talking about positioning going into the end of this year, some of the major things that we're discussing with investors right now, evaluate your cash positions. This is probably number one. A lot of investors continue to be significantly overweight cash. You could make this argument that cash had a strong yield, but when you compare that to what the equity market has done, I think we could, we could actually have a very, very different outcome. I think the second thing is take a look at like where you have outsized positions and concentration. I think what's going to dominate a lot of the flows next year is not just blind flows into the market capitalization weighted index, but actually saying, let's look at S&P 500 equal weighted. Let's look at some of the profitable small and mid cap shares. Big, big theme today. Yep. Uh, equal weight and small caps. And you're leaning in on that, too? We're leaning in on it as well. But I think within small caps, you have to be a little careful, because if we do have a situation where we have rates that are rates that are higher for longer, you're going to want some strong balance sheets. You're going to want profitable growth shares within that space. Mm -hmm. And you can certainly do that. You talked about earnings growth uh, expected to be robust. Is it going to be robust enough to justify an expanding multiple? Some people are questioning whether you can even justify it now. But if you get multiple expansion, the valuation of the market continues to go up, you better have earnings that justify it. You better have earnings that justify it. Are we so gonna get I, it? I think I think we will. I do. I don't think it's gonna be one of those years. I think it's if you're looking at high single digits, right, for earnings growth, that's a strong, solid year. But I think the bigger story is going to be this continued strength, continued broadening out. And I think it's going to be, when we talk about what could introduce volatility in terms of the market performance, that's really going to be policy, not politics, being put into action mm -hmm. and seeing, OK, what what is really going to be the impact of tariffs? I think the market's trying to figure that out, but we don't know yet. We don't know yet. You think you lean into the the winners, what's worked, or some of the laggards? Like healthcare is is by far the laggard. By far it's the up, laggard. it's up seven and a half percent on the year. But when you compare it to financials up 35 or tech up 35 or industrials up 27, you can go on and on. I mean, they're just astounding re returns for some of these uh, sectors this year. Do you, do you which so do you lean on? Healthcare is an interesting one because it's one that certainly we've liked for a long time in terms of investing in longevity. But I think when we talk about healthcare, people tend to assume that that's just one thing, right? So when you're talking about pharmaceuticals versus biotech, so what's one of the things that could actually drive stronger performance? We're all talking about increased M&A activity in 2025. That's obviously an area to watch in terms of biotech. And so this is something that you, it's really more of an idiosyncratic story. But remember, not all healthcare is pharma. And while pharma sold off, you could even look at some of that sell off and say, are some of the valuations now good entry points?